Hi, everyone. So nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. Songs uplift your spirit and the spirit of all others. At the time of difficulties, you may feel discouraged, helpless, and desperate. That is a time when you might consider writing a poem. Write about your concern, fear, and hope. Write poems for peace, love, and a bright future. Let me give you an example. This is the first peace poem I had written. The title is From One Candle. In the darkness of war and violence, spreads the light of a peaceful way from one candle to another and to another, to many more. In the darkness of wrath and hatred, spread the light of loving kindness from one candle to another and to another, to many more. In the darkness of smoke and sorrow, spread the dream of an end to war from one candle to another and to another, to many more. From one candle to another and to another, to many more. You see, there is a refrain from one candle to another and to another, to many more. A, re a refrain makes it easy for you to write. A refrain makes it easy to compose and sing. Now here's another poem. The title is Peace is Our Dream. Peace is our dream, our hope, and our vision. Peace is our dream, our love, and our prayer. May we discover the way to achieve it. May we realize it right here, right here, right now, right now. Here, uh, peace is our dream is a refrain. A peace poem can be very simple. Remember, simple can be powerful. Anyone who can sing can make up a tune and sing. I asked my daughter Karuna when she was a college student to set this poem to music. Peace is our dream and our hope and our vision. Peace is our dream and our love and our prayer. May we discover some way to achieve it. May it be realized right here and right now. This is our dream and our hope and our vision. This is our dream and our love and our prayer. May we discover some way to achieve it. May it be realized right here and right now. May it be realized right here and right now. So, Kaz, we had many questions from artists in our community, musicians, dancers, poets, painters, writers, uh, designers, and so on. Some of the questions are similar, as people are having very similar concerns right now. So we put together some questions to make the most of our time tonight. Mm -hmm. For instance, the first question was asked by uh, seven different people. We are today facing uh, many problems that are very fundamental and urgent, such as hunger, um, violence caused by racism, sexism, lack of basic health care, and even basic human rights, social inequality, and so on. So as artists, we often ask ourselves, what is the point or relevance of art in these circumstances. Wouldn't it 
wouldn't it be better if we did something more effective to benefit people? What are your thoughts of, uh, on that? Thank you for your questions. Hunger, violence, lack of health care and human rights, and social inequality. I hear you. I hear you with my heart. Artists can think creativ creatively, ask right questions, communicate openly with others, collaborate widely, plan deeply, and make things happen most effectively. So artists are best suited for changing situations and for transforming the society. So, Kaz, thinking of compassionate action in the world, would it be very limited to just cultivate a personal artistic practice and not to participate in larger scale activism? Or does it just depend on the path that each individual chooses? No situation is impossible to change. No one is free of responsibility. Cass, in your perspective, what is the connection between spiritual practice and artistic practice? How could art be part of our spiritual practice? Spiritual practice makes our personality deep and thoughtful. Without practice, our art may remain superficial. So in terms of... Um, peace poems, and peace song, you don't have to write a score. Just make up a tune and sing. You could ask a composer friend to put it into a score, or perhaps computer can do it. To write a peace poem, it's good to have a concrete image. Think of anything around you. A candle is a nice image. Sky, sunshine, an apple, a carrot, a garden. Anything that is actual and easy to imagine. Here is another example. The title is Garden. In my garden, I plant carrot seeds. Earth is my trusted partner. In my garden, I plant carrot seeds. Earth is my nurturing mother. In my garden, I plant carrot seeds. Earth is my protecting father. In my garden, I plant carrot seeds. Earth is me my beloved child. In my garden, I plant carrot seeds. Earth is my hope for the future. protecting father earth is my hope for the future in my garden I plant carrot seeds in my garden I plant carrot seeds Protecting father, earth is my beloved child. In my garden, is my trusted partner. Earth is my nurturing mother. Earth 
nurturing mother I plant carrots Earth is my protecting father Earth is my hope for the future in my garden Earth is my trusted partner Earth is my nurturing mother I plant carrots Earth is my protecting father Earth is my beloved child in my Earth is my protecting father Earth is my hope for the future In my garden I plant kerosene In my garden I plant kerosene my trusted partner earth is my nurturing mother earth is my protecting father earth is my beloved child earth is my trusted partner earth is my nurturing mother earth is my protecting father earth is my hope for the future in my garden earth is my trusted partner I plant Earth is seeds. my protecting father. Earth is my beloved child. My Earth is my trusted partner. Earth is my nurturing mother. I plant Earth is my protecting father. Earth is my hope for the future in my garden. my trusted partner earth is my nurturing mother earth is my protecting father earth is my beloved child earth is my trusted partner earth is my nurturing mother earth is my protecting father earth is my hope for the future earth is my hope for the future You might like to find a composer and collaborate with the composer. Give the composer freedom to revise. That makes it easy to set your poem to music. Now, Japan invaded China in 1937, and there was a horrible massacre in the then capital city of Nanjing that year. In 2007, I organized the first large-scale Sino-Japanese conference on this tragedy in Nanjing for its 70th anniversary. Later, I brought a small number of Chinese, Japanese, and U.S. friends to the Anti-Japanese War Museum in Nanjing and had a dialogue with former Chinese soldiers. This is a song, Karuna, my daughter, composed and sung that time. The title is Eternal Remorse, Sino-Japanese War, 1937 to 1945. A very, very dark path we took. Invading, killing, raping women, children, and men. Hundreds of thousands taken my eternal regret, we shall never forget. A very wrong path we took, slaughtering a civilization. Eight years of genocides on our sister nation. My heart is filled with sorrow, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I was only four. How can I face it? A child thrown by war. How can I atone? How can I rewrite? How can I make it up? All that's done before. Today, 
We walk in the light, joining, sharing, grieving. We look at each other in the eyes, turning hurt into healing. We express our sorrow and together step into a new tomorrow. A very dark path we took Invading, killing, raping Women, children and men Hundreds of thousands taken My eternal regret We shall A very wrong path we took Slaughtering a civilization Eight years of genocide On our system like to address your most concern of your time, our time, what you are most worried about right now. What is your message? I wrote the next poem when the Second Gulf War was approaching in 1990. I live in the United States, so I didn't want our country to go to war with Iraq, but they seem to have a high potential of a U.S. attack. So I wrote, the title is Peace in Sorrow. Peace is crushed. Peace is in sorrow. With every landmine we export. Peace is crushed. Peace is in sorrow. With every bomb we drop. Peace is crushed. Peace is in sorrow. With every battle we fight, peace is crushed, peace is in sorrow. With every war we win, let peace not be crushed, let peace not be in sorrow, let peace be the victor. With every landmine 
we drop Pieces crushed Pieces in sorrow With every battle that we fight Pieces crush Pieces in sorrow With every war Every war we Let peace not be crushed, no, no, no. Let peace not be in sorrow, no, no, no. Let peace be the victor, peace be the victor. So, Cass, in our culture, although many artists are not like that, art tends to be seen as an expression of a more impulsive, confused, and individual as aspect of mind. At the same time, in art that comes from the wisdom traditions, like Zen, for example, or from the work of people like Mayumi Oda, Kazuo Ono, Yoshi Oida, and many others, there is a great sense of sanity, clarity, and discipline. How do you think we can recover this approach in our culture? We can be whole as human beings, be healthy, joyous, and inspiring. That can be reflected in art and in society. Making art is often seen as something for professional artists only. And many of us feel that we have no artistic talent or we are not capable of good enough to create art. What would you, what would you suggest to someone who feels this way? Art can be music, writing prose and poetry, communication, performance, and conceptual. Everyone who thinks and acts creatively is an artist. All people are artists without noticing or admitting it. Many of us feel uh, very busy in our daily lives, lacking time and energy, or even lacking uh, financial support to create art and to do a piece in social work. Would you have any suggestion to someone who feels like this? Do something you enjoy most. Be excited about what you are creating. Time and opportunity will follow. A great advantage of having a poem and a song is that they go straight into the hearts of people. People don't say yes, but, and start arguing. Here is another peace poem, very simple. The title is Peace with Justice. Peace with justice for us all. Peace with fairness with us all. Peace with equality for us all. 
peace with happiness for a soul, peace with a future for a soul. You can write about your personal feelings. Love songs can be part of peace songs. This poem is dedicated to my son, Ko. The title is Gift of Gifts. My son, my love, wondrous is your gift. Your peaceful mind is so precious to me. My son, my love, wondrous is your gift. Your march for peace is so precious to me. My son, my love, wondrous is your gift. Your faith in nonviolence is so precious to me. My son, my love, wondrous is your gift. Your smile in peace is so precious to me. Here's another poem dedicated, dedicated to my wife, Linda. The title is Encounter. Human to human, encountering at this very moment. How rare, how precious. Human to human, knowing each other at this very place. How rare, how precious. Human to human, loving each other in this lifetime. How rare, how precious. Human to human, forming a family in this world. How rare, how precious. This poem was set to music by Wayland Rogers and was performed by the ensemble of four solo singers and a piano called the Fourth Coast Ensemble in Chicago in 2018. Oh, 
the same music by Wayland Rogers was performed at Kennedy Center, Washington, D.C. in 2019. It was conducted by Doreen Rao, a great conductor and a close, a close friend of Linda and me. See how the same score can create such different experience of music.
Thank you, Kaz. Um, can we have three more questions? Yeah. It is common that uh, business leaders get compliments on being aggressive and having big egos as long as they um, deliver profits. The same goes for political leaders as long as they deliver economic growth. Compassionate leaders, on the other hand, are often considered too soft for the job. Compassion doesn't seem to doesn't seem to have much room in positions of power nowadays, unless we are talking about some sort of compassionate workshop to increase productivity. So how can we make compassion an indispensable virtue for the leaders of our time? Identify what people need most. Figure out the best way to achieve it. Find the most effective language to communicate with. That is a compassionate action. Could you talk a little about how you do internally to have continuous liveliness in your artistic production? It looks like in the West, we have a tendency to rely on discipline only. And to me, it seems that in the contemplative approach of art, something else is cultivated. How can we keep liveliness in our creative practice? Realize that every moment in each one's life is miracles. Savor the miracles. Realize every moment of each being is miracles. Continuing to act accordingly is awakening. So, Kaz, in times of great collective suffering and difficulties, it is very common that people would paralyze because of depression or anger and lose confidence that social transformation is actually possible. We know a little about your history, and we know that you have gone through a lot of challenges in a lifetime of peace work, including having uh, experienced the horrors of war in your childhood. How can we recover and keep continuous confidence that no situation is, is impossible to change? How not to give up? even in the midst of great collective suffering. To take a large scale social action means that we keep failing and losing. That means we are getting better and getting closer to achieving our goals. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the failing and losing. Imagine the best scenario for peace. I met with Rodrigo Carazzo, former president of Costa Rica at a peace conference in the Netherlands in 1999. It was inspiring to learn that Costa Rica had abolished its military forces in 1949 and had kept its independence and was leading the world on environmental protection and happiness of citizens. In 2001, President Carazzo and I started an international peace organization called A World Without Armies. Our intention is to help nations to be military forces free. I'm still director. This piece was dedicated to Mr. Carazzo. The title is Beautiful Costa Rica. In the light mist of a cloud forest, a tiny, tiny bluebird speaks to us. You are beautiful. You are wise. You are strong. Look at me. Listen to me. Follow me. Follow me all the way. In the dense green of a rainforest, a giant, giant butterfly speaks to us. You are beautiful. You are wise. You are strong. Look at me. Listen to me, follow me, follow me all the way. In the, beauty, in the beautiful Costa Rica with no army, a happy, happy friend speaks to us. You are beautiful, you're wise, you're strong. 
look at us, listen to us, follow us, follow us all the way. This was uh, this poem was set to music and performed by Fox Glove Trio, Iri Hudson Koto, Nicole Milner Piano, Phoebe and Voice in 2013.
Music is uplifting. Think of the song, We Shall Overcome, at the time of civil rights movement in the United States in the 60s. Music is inspiring. Music is uniting. Music transforms an individual. Here is the last song for you. The title is Sing a Song of Peace. Sing a song of peace that may change your heart forever. Sing a song of peace that may change our hearts forever. Sing a song of peace that may change the world forever. Do we have time for three more questions? Yeah, sure. Okay. We always hear artists talking about insecurity, fear of the blank page or canvas, uh, creativity block, and so on. Are these feelings somehow related to attachment and aversion or to self-centeredness? How to enjoy and create art without cultivating these tendencies? Blocks are all in your mind. Keep moving your hands. Breakthrough is in each moment of your working. It often happens that I have a big creativity burst and many ideas. That gives me energy, joy, and a strong impulse to bring these ideas to life. However, as time passes and activities accumulate, I become anxious, distracted, and I lose the initial energy. So is it possible to balance this energy or even to, to distinguish which creative paths would be most beneficial? Always have enough rest and do things that restore your energy. Be fresh and young, regardless of your age. Thank you, Kaz. So we have uh, one last question. How important is aesthetics in an art where the quality of the presence is important, such as um, brushwork and calligraphy? I can have a beneficial process of creation, doing it with a present mind, uh, but then I don't like the aesthetic result. Or I can have a, a distracted process of creation and have an interesting uh, aesthetic result. How can we understand this relationship between the quality of uh, the creation process and their final aesthetic result? You know what you like and what you would like to present to others, to the public, and to the future generation, don't you? Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Fabio. Thank you, everyone. My best wishes to you forever. Kaz. Thank you, Kaz. Thank you. Thank you so much. It is a great honor and a joy for us. And please be well, take good care. And I hope we can uh, maybe meet again online in this community in the future. Thank you very much.